here are my two SI4732 radios. I'm going to do a quick comparison between the, well, almost the latest software that I have on the radio that's all at the bottom and the ATS20 labeled uh, radio above is on the version 1.5 um, firmware which these things seem to come out from the factory or from the constructor with they always seem to be on the one I think it's 1.1.5 I'll turn them both on I'll try and turn them both on at exactly the same time and we'll see the difference in boot up so it's 1.1.5 and 3.0.7 is the newer one. Okay, you'll see that the um, newer firmware radio boots up quite a bit quicker. And of course, the first and uh, perhaps most obvious difference is we've got a larger frequency readout uh, with the newer version. There's many other differences. Um, perhaps the most significant difference is the newer version, when you update, you'll find that um, you've got a different S meter on the display. But a lot of the functions are now controlled by the encoder wheel. So, for example, if we want to change band, we press the band button here, the band up button. Once, and you'll see that the, the AM there is highlighted. And turn in the encoder, switches us between the different bands. We press the band bu up button again. And we go back to normal. The old version of the firmware, it was uh, a matter of continually pressing the band up button to step up or band down button to step down. Volume again, it's the same. We press on the newer firmware, we press the volume up button. We've got a little highlighted block next to the volume. We turn the encoder wheel up for an increase in volume. And we turn it down similarly for a decrease in volume. On the old receiver, we use the volume up and volume down buttons to step through. The tuning step again on the newer version, we press the step button and we can cycle through the available tuning steps. We have more tuning steps, of course, on the, the updated. We have a 9 kilohertz step for medium wave in Europe. We have a 50 kilohertz step and a 100 kilohertz step. The old firmware, we must use the step button and keep pressing for the steps. We have less choice of frequency steps on the old version. We have 1, 5 and 10 and that's it, 1, 5 and 10. So, number of differences. Um, I prefer the newer version. It also recalls the last band you were on, so when you switch the radio off it will power back up on the last band you use which can be quite useful um, the only issue some I know some people are concerned about the amount of uh, encoder use we're now getting with this newer firmware we're using the encoder for volume for step and so on for band change there's been a lot of um, reports of these encoders failing um, this one so far is okay but it's one of those things I think there are issues with the encoder um, the performance, as far as I can see, of the two radios is identical, and so it should be because the component parts, the RF parts, haven't been changed here. It's just that the firmware that's on the Arduino that sits inside these radios has been updated in the newer version. Um, we now have uh, two spare buttons um, with the newer version. We have the band down button, which doesn't do anything, and the volume down button, which doesn't do anything. So I don't know whether there are any plans for those, but there's potentially uh, different functions could be allocated to these two. So I just thought it would be worth a little look. Um, as I say, the performance of the two is identical. The newer version does seem to boot up a couple of seconds more quickly, and um, I find the frequency reader a lot better to read. I still think maybe we're having too much information on this screen and perhaps we could dispense with some of it. That's just an opinion. Um, but certainly it's a big improvement over the original version. Thank you for watching.